are just now coming up to speed. We are just now taking advantage of the opportunity to offer site and release to the citizens of Bear County. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly have time for, for questions uh, later during this press conference, but I wanted to uh, let you know, uh, first of all, who the players are that have made this happen today. Uh, I said uh, early uh, again in my administration that I anticipated that we would be able to announce getting off uh, the ground sometime during Fiesta, but I didn't realize how many players are involved to make this a success. I didn't realize how many moving parts uh, there are to make sure that this works. And indeed, that's exactly what, what has happened. We, you see here a huge collaboration of, of different agencies and different departments to ensure that we get it right. Uh, I know that there has been uh, a version of this tried under a previous adv administration that couldn't get off the ground, and I soon learn it's because you really uh, have to work together with different agencies and different departments. So let me first uh, thank those individuals that are standing uh, with me, uh, as well as those that are in the background that have made this a reality. Uh, I want to tell you that, uh, that this is something that a lot of people have put a lot of man hours uh, into to make sure that we do everything to make this a success. Um, Chief McManus is, is here uh, representing the San Antonio Police Department. Uh, Sheriff Salazar with the Bear County Sheriff's Office is here. Michael Lazito representing the Office of Criminal Justice. Uh, and that's just three departments, three agencies uh, that have been very uh, invested to make sure that we get this right. And uh, you certainly will have an opportunity to, uh, to ask them any questions if you would like. But in a nutshell, let me tell you that the site and release program is all about trying to, to uh, give individuals that are stopped on the street an opportunity to avoid an arrest. When they are uh, faced with being arrested for a low level uh, minor offense that it doesn't involve a crime of violence and there are enumerated offenses, briefly we're talking about uh, class A and B possession of marijuana. We're talking about class B theft and class B theft of service. We're talking about driving while license invalid. Uh, those are the type of offenses that if an officer is stopping someone uh, on the street, instead of placing that person under arrest and spending the time to take them down to the magistrate's office and, and book them, which sometimes takes an entire shift, that officer has the discretion to make the decision to give that individual a citation and have that person report here to the Bear County Reentry Center. And there we have the citation books now available where uh, there's going to be a specific uh, date. They're going to have uh, the officers are, are asking them to report 10 days after the individual re uh, receives the citation. And then after that date, they have uh, 30 days to report to the reentry center. What will happen then is someone will screen them from that department and determine, uh, along with a member from my office, uh, a prosecutor, uh, will review the case and decide whether or not that, pro that person is appropriate. Uh, and uh, another vital cog in this wheel is the Bear County Public Defender's Office. I saw the chief walking here, Michael Young and Stephanie Brown from that office. They're going to man uh, someone here on Tuesdays and Thursdays to make sure that they interview the, uh, the participant to make sure that they are eligible for, uh, for the program. Uh, and if they are, then, then the program begins. And, and basically, we're giving them 60 days to either uh, comply with community service or uh, perform, uh, or, or that is, attend a class, whether it's a drug class or a theft class. Uh, and if they do what they're supposed to, then, uh, then the case uh, uh, stays rejected. Uh, what the benefit is, uh, not only will they not have a criminal record downtown, but they can also avoid a, 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 an arrest record. So that's a benefit to the citizen. So it's, it, its benefit is twofold. And in a minute, um, I'm going to pass uh, the microphone to my colleagues up here, and they can, they can uh, talk to you about their involvement. Um, but before I do that, is there anybody here from any Spanish uh, language? Language, okay. 
Eh, este programa es, uh, se va a iniciar, uh, le dicen, le, le, es que le dicen uh, Sight and Release o Citar y Soltar. Y el propósito de este programa es, es que en vez de, de un arresto, la persona va a participar en un tipo de programa donde uh, quizás tenga que uh, cumplir con servicio comunitario, o sea, una clase, clase digo, de, de drogas o de, de, de robo o algo así. Y si la persona cumple, cumple digo, con ese tipo de programa, entonces el caso se va a ser rechazado y esa persona no va a tener cualquier récord uh, en, en, en el condado, no va a tener récord de, de arresto. Así que en esa manera es algo que vaya, le vaya a beneficiar al ciudadano. Y, y como les digo, ese es un programa que va a ser beneficiar a cualquier persona que califica uh, con este programa. All right, I would like to now pass the microphone on to, to my colleagues uh, and uh, give you their, their take on their uh, participation in this program. Chief McManus. Thank you, Joe. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, site and release has been a long time coming. Uh, we started this conversation uh, a few years ago um, when Joe got into office, he told me in, in, during discussions that uh, site and release was one, one of his uh, 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 priorities. So uh, this was not a simple task to get this off the ground. There was a lot of work behind it. Uh, our planning and research uh, unit, uh, and I'll, I'll do a shout out to him, uh, uh, Sergeant Chris Lutton did a lot of the heavy lifting to get this thing off the ground. Uh, from from uh, planning, the, planning with the DA's office, the, uh, what, it, what it will look like on the back end after officers issue the citation uh, was, was not an easy task. It was not a simple discussion. Uh, there were several iterations of the citation book that we had to go through uh, in consultation with the DA's office, uh, but we've got it done. One, one of the primary benefits for the, for the San Antonio Police Department is it will give officers more time to spend on the street. There is less time taken to write a citation than there is to process an arrest. And there was a lot of support for this to happen. Our city council members were very supportive of this and they pushed it along to help make it happen. So I, I wanna publicly thank them uh, for uh, seeing, helping see this through. Uh, I think the benefits to the community will uh, will, will show, uh, as, as Joe said, it, it uh, you know it prevents someone could prevent someone from having an arrest record uh, for making a you know one-time mistake. Uh, but for me, again, it's officers being able to spend more time on the street, and one of the non-negotiables for me starting this uh, discussion was that officers must have full discretion, and in fact, they do. Uh, after it was all said and done, officers did wind up with full discretion and, uh, and the ability to either cite someone or make an arrest when necessary. So, uh, turn it back over to Joe. Thank you, Chief. I, I do want to echo that not only the partners that you see up here have had a lot to do with, with today's announcement and, 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 and getting everything ready for today, but, but I, I do want to, uh, to give credit to the, the Public Safety Committee of the uh, City Council uh, they were very supportive with this. We spoke to them on, on more than one occasion, uh, and by and large, they are they are in support of what we were doing. We are doing. Uh, they had some very uh, valid concerns that we addressed, and uh, so they've been supportive from the very beginning. Uh, additionally, members of the county commissioners' court uh, uh, have also been supportive. We've also met with them, and they understand uh, why we were doing this. And one of the things that I've said. Uh, is that this is just one part of, of criminal justice reform that we are bringing to Bear County. I'm here to say criminal justice reform is here in Bear County. This is a good start and, and hopefully we'll continue to work hard to keep this community safe and to continue to work with our partners. And speaking of partners, I'd like to now bring up Sheriff Salazar because he certainly has been a, a vital part of this. Sheriff? Yes, sir. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I, I 
again, I just want to applaud uh, Joe Gonzalez and the DA's office for taking the lead on this uh, and really making it something to be proud of. Uh, you know, the, the sheriff's office uh, we operate the Bear County Jail. J the Bear County Jail and every other jail for that matter, uh, jails are for people that society's afraid of. It's not for people that we're mad at for committing some minor infraction uh, that just was a, was a dumb thing and maybe it was a one-time thing. Uh, and there's no sense in giving that person a, a criminal record if it's something that can be corrected otherwise. And so I see site and, win, site and release as being a win-win-win. Uh, it gets the officer back out onto the street that much quicker uh, to go out and deal with real crime, with preventing uh, another crime from happening, many times a violent crime. It's a, it's a win for the person being cited because it may have the desired effect. We might just jolt this person into getting their, their act together uh, and giving them a second chance, keeping them out there as a taxpayer versus tying up a jail bed uh, to the tune of 60 to $80 a day in some cases. Uh, but it's also a win for Bear County taxpayers in that we're not having to support that person. Uh, they're out and making their own way. And, and there's, there's always a fail safe when it comes to site and release. If this person just proves that they can't get it together, they don't get the point, they don't comply with this program that really is a gift from the, le from the legal system, then okay, obviously we have to, to get a little more stringent with that person and, and take a different approach with them. But I certainly think that it's the decent thing to do from the human rights perspective, from a taxpayer perspective, dollars and cents perspective, it's absolutely the right way to go. Uh, as you all know, the Sheriff's Office, uh, we, we started doing this back in 2018. Uh, we met with what we, we felt were mixed results. Uh, for the first year, we had about 60% no-shows that just didn't comply. Um, this year, we're on track to have about 50% no-shows, people that don't comply with the conditions set forth. But hearing Joe and his vision for this is just a breath of fresh air. Uh, we see that, that he's streamlined it. He's made it really user-friendly. Uh, and then I think that, that we're going to see some vast improvements in this, certainly as the SAPD jumps on board and, and they're really going to be the true test of this thing because of the sheer volume of people that they deal with on a daily basis. So I'm excited at the prospect of working with, with my teammates up here uh, yet again, and I'm excited to, to, to be able to show off the results once we uh, get a true feel for, for what this program does for Bear County. Thank you all so much. And I promise you that we would have a Q&A, and we will do that in a minute. But, but I, again, another vital uh, partner in this who just walked in. I want to give him an opportunity to say a couple of words, if, if you're willing to. Mike, would you, Michael Young, would you uh, uh, like to come up here and say a couple of words? Good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, I'm very happy with this. Uh, this has been a true collaboration between San Antonio Police Department, Bear County Sheriff's Office, and Joe Gonzalez. Uh, this is really cutting edge. And we were glad to be participating in it. We were invited to participate by Joe and the DA's office, basically to make sure that we're watching out for the rights of the people who are cited, so they understand the process, so they understand what's going on. So his invitation for us to participate was really meaningful because it's going to help people to understand and make sure they are successful in this program. So uh, we've been working with Sheriff Salazar on the Bear County program for a couple of years. Again, the problems is, it wasn't streamlined. There was some confusion about where people went. I think with the way the DA's office has reworked it, it's going to be massively successful. And so we're looking forward to it, and we're excited to be part of it. Sir, what is your Yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm Michael Young, and I'm the chief public defender here in Bear County, Texas. And I'll be available for the Spanish speaking as well uh, later. Thank you, Michael. Uh, and one other person I'd like uh, to bring up, because, again, he's – He's a, a vital part of this to make sure that, that uh, it, takes all, it go, takes off the ground and that we're successful, and that's the director of the, of the Office of Criminal Justice. Uh, I, before I bring him uh, up, I, I do want to recognize a couple of individuals who, who have been working very hard behind the scenes to make this a reality today, and, and one of the, those individuals is a person that is the supervisor of pretrial services, under his direction, Dr. Norma Greenfield. Dr. Greenfield is, is here and she, again, has been working very diligently, as has the chief of my intake section, Jamisa Jarman. They have been working, uh, again, very hard to make sure that, that we do what we need to to get this off the ground. I would like to now uh, come, uh, ask to come up uh, Mike Lozito, who is the director of, of the county's criminal justice uh, division, to explain what role he and his department will play. So Mike, would you like to come up here, please? Yes, Thank you, Joe, for the opportunity. So on um, our end, the Office of Criminal Justice, uh, we report to the uh, county manager's office and to the uh, commissioner's court. 
but besides uh, pretrial services and the process in this reentry center that you're at right now, uh, my department oversees the medical examiner's office, the crime lab, uh, specialty courts, and uh, mental health department and jail population strategies uh, for the county. So the, the county's made a big investment in front end diversion programs and really working, trying to um, bring those programs available at our justice intake facility. We have our mental health clinicians there. We have our pretrial services there 24-7, the public defender's office to make sure when people come in that we're assessing them and that we're finding what's the right uh, place to place an individual, especially if they're a nonviolent person, and how do we keep them out of the, out of the system for the future. And part of this is what they call smart, smart justice initiatives, right? These are assessing people, looking at what their problems are, why they intersect with the law, and then trying to build the programs around it on there. So what you see here at site and release, for the site and release program is, is that kind of the same concept is using services that we have available in the process. So I'm real proud of this facility. This is uh, probably the only one like it in the state of Texas that provides these type of services where it's a, a county run facility uh, that'll provide it. But what you'll see here is that um, this, this facility will provide um, Goodwill is here, and hopefully, you know, if you're around to take a tour to see the actual programs, Goodwill is here. The Alamo Workhorse is also here to help individuals find jobs. We have AA, NA. We have groups going on. This facility is open until about eight, nine o'clock at night. It's open on Saturdays. We try to be accommodating to individuals and their families. We do a lot of mental health support groups, trauma-informed. Uh, cognitive behavioral changes for, for individuals. So those programs are, are here. And so in, in discussing with Joe on, on building this program and trying to really look at the back end of the system to see how we can build those successes and make sure people are, are coming in and they're doing the right things in order to get this off their record and not, not have this uh, uh, haunt them for the rest of their lives. So uh, this is a, a great opportunity. So what will happen here is the district attorney is housed here. One of the offices is, is over there. They're here, uh, I believe, twice a week to um, be able to, when individuals report, to review cases right on hand. And we'll also have the public defender's offices here. Our pretrial services staff will be here. We'll have this room here to actually utilize to do uh, the review. I know the public defender is going to talk to the individuals and then kind of guide them through the system as to what's best for their, for their client uh, in the process and then we'll be able to have the data and report out. One of the things that we have that's available for us in this program is, is that we have um, uh, the ability through our case management system, we can do robocalls, so we, we do automatic calls to remind individuals you know, to report, to, to do the things that they need to do, and we also do texting, right? So text them and it'll remind them on there. So that helps us. In our pretrial, our, our failure to appear rate is, we have about a 90% success rate in our process that people show up for court and do what they need to do. So we're hoping by involving those strategies that we're doing now, it's gonna help improve the program and, and bring it to a full fruition. But uh, you know, I, I also wanna thank uh, the chief, city council, uh, the DA's office, all the partners here, the sheriff, uh, public defender's office, my staff, because it really has been an effort to, to get together and figure out what works best. But, you know, there was a study done by the Arnold Foundation that showed uh, individuals that go to jail, if they're in jail for just one day, they become a 10% recidivist for the rest of their lives. If they're in jail for two days, it's 20%. And if it's for three days or more, they become a 40% recidivist for the rest of their lives. So it's really important to take individuals on the nonviolent level that aren't, that don't have a lot of the criminal instincts to take them, divert them, and get them into programming and, and divert them from that. Because when they, when they come, go to jail, they can lose their jobs, they can lose their house, they can lose their transportation, payments, the credit, they can lose family members, and trying just to adjust from that when somebody goes into jail for 30 days and trying to come out, it takes them five years to catch up. So you don't want to have that neg negative on you when you're still trying, you know, you have problems and you're trying to rebuild and it may be mental health, substance abuse, homelessness, whatever those issues are. So I really thank and commend this group for, 
for what they're doing and trying to build this. And it, and it really is, when you look at it, it's, it's smart justice in the, in the long run. Thank you. When you look at this group up here and you see that a lot of us um, look like we, be, we would be traditionally law and order, uh, we are still law and order. Uh, we have members of, of both the police department and the sheriff's office, as well as the district attorney's office. And our job is to keep this community safe. But as Mike says, we have to be smart on crime. We have to be smart with our resources. We have to be smart with the manpower that we have available to us. And that's part of, of the mission with criminal justice reform, is where can we best put our resources so that we can make sure that we're get, getting the violent offenders off the street and we're sending those people to prison, the ones that are dealing drugs, the, one that are, the ones that are committing murder and, and violent sexual assaults. Uh, not so much the, the, the minor drug offenses and driving while intoxicated, I'm sorry, driving while licensed and valid uh, and, and minor offenses such as that. So that's part of the reason that we are here. Uh, if it hasn't been said, let me make clear that this program is going to officially get off the ground July 1st, that's this Monday. So the citation, if it's issued uh, by a member of law enforcement tells the individual they have 10 days after which to report. So the earliest someone is going to be able to report here is going to be July 11th. And then from that point on, they have 30 days to report, uh, to be screened, and, and be told whether or not they're, they're eligible. So again, everybody is very excited uh, uh, to, to, uh, to get this off the ground. But I, I, I say that this is like, uh, and you know how hard it is to open up a new restaurant or open up a new business. And it doesn't do any good to have a, a fancy building and, and to have a great menu if you don't get any customers. And so we're going to rely on law enforcement to send us the customers. The, 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 the officers on the street have to make the decision to cite the individual and send them over here. So we're hopeful that that's going to happen. We're excited because that's certainly the message that these individuals have, have given to their rank and file is it's let's, let's see this thing work. So hopefully that's what's going to happen, and, and we're all excited uh, to get this off the ground. So uh, with, without further ado, if anybody has any questions for either me or any of the other individuals here, we're certainly uh, willing to do this. Yes, sir. So let's say you get the citation July 1st. The citation will say that after 10 days, you have, because it's going to take 10 days for the officer to turn in his citation. Right? So let's say January, I'm sorry, July 11th, you have a 30-day window to come here to report. Once you come here, someone's going to screen you to see if you're eligible for participation, that it's the right type of offense. So between July 11th, Cor correct. Okay. So you're going to be here. Let's say you're 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 screened and you're and you're the the right candidate. Right? You don't have anything violent in your background. Uh, we believe you're a good candidate. Then someone from the public defender's office is going to interview you, to instruct you what you need to do, uh, to comply, either uh, perform community service or maybe uh, take a drug class or take a sh anti shoplifting class. Then you're going to have 60 days to complete that. You have to bring back proof that you've done that. If you bring that proof and uh, it's satisfactory to us, then the case goes away. Right? It never got filed in the court system. You never got an arrest, so there is no arrest record. You go on with your life. Uh, that's the way it's supposed to work, ideally. Uh, so hopefully that's the way it will work. Now, ¿Cuál es su pregunta? No, después de 10 días. Ah. Cuando le dan a una persona el citatorio, se tiene que esperar 10 días. Y después de los 10 días van a tener 30 días para presentarse. Entonces le van a dar una entrevista. Y después de la entrevista, si esa persona califica, le van a decir que, que tiene que cumplir con uh, servicio comunitario o, o cumplir con unos clases de, de um, cualquier tratamiento, vamos a decir, ¿verdad? Y después de eso, si pueden comprobar que lo hicieron, entonces el, el, el caso se va a quedar cerrado. 
vamos a rechazar el caso, no va, no va a tener cualquier uh, récord, no va, no va a tener uh, ninguna condena. Eso es como va a funcionar el programa. The problem with expunction is a different animal. Someone has to actually initiate the expunction process, so that would take someone hiring a lawyer and getting an expunction. Uh, unfortunately, we can't make this program retroactive. All I can do is what, we, what we're doing during my administration. There may be an opportunity to review cases uh, since uh, I took office, but uh, we're going to, we're, again, it's a pilot program. Right now, we're going to focus on uh, the officers referring those cases to us, and then we'll see what happens. There may be other opportunities to be equitable uh, in terms of how those individuals were treated in court, but remember, the cite and release starts with the officer on the street giving the, the individual a citation. If that person has already been to court, then that doesn't fit in the profile of the ideal candidate for this program. So what determines discretion? Well, I, I, first of all, the, the type of offense. It's got to fit within one of those categories. Uh, and then the officer's contact with the individual. If the, uh, the officer believes that this person would benefit from, uh, uh, from the site and release program, then the officer will, uh, can, can cite the individual. So it's going, it, it, a lot of it is going to be subjective to, be, to begin with. Uh, the officer is going to have to uh, be comfortable in making the decision that citing that individual and allowing him to come here for a minor uh, offense uh, is beneficial to him, to the county, and to the whole system. If he has someone that he believes uh, is not a good candidate, either because of a criminal history or because he believes that the person is not interested in it, the officer has the discretion to make that arrest. So it's going to be based on the officer's discretion. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to monitor the type of individuals that are going to be uh, cited to see that it's equitable across the county. We don't want any group of individuals from any particular part of the county to benefit and others not. I'm, I'm particularly concerned with socioeconomic di uh, uh, diversity. Uh, I want to make sure everyone's treated equally. So that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at. But the answer to the question is, it's going to be discretionary with the officers on the street. So a lot of people tend to take positive and build the homes, to be honest. Well. Uh, Sheriff, that's certainly going to affect your jail space. Is this relief for you finally? We're hoping so. You know, we're hoping so. With the mixed results we saw on the pilot, it gave us a good gauge on, on how things could be tweaked. Joe made the right changes for sure, uh, and I think that we're, that we're going to see a positive effect on that jail population. Can you tell us about how the, if any type of racial metrics are going to be tracked? Because you mentioned earlier you want to make sure this is going to apply equally to people. But is, what's going to be done to see you know, the race uh, or, or possibly the socioeconomic status of the person that's, that's getting a citation versus somebody who's being arrested? I think, remember, this is a brand new uh, program for Bear County. We're going to rely heavily on pretrial services to be able to monitor the types of individuals that qualify for the program and the success rate. So we're going to obviously, if we see some indication uh, that, that it's only uh, benefiting one socioeconomic group, uh, then that's going to be cause for pause for me. I'm going to be concerned with that, but we don't know yet. Remember, this is a brand new program, but we certainly are going to be monitoring that and, and we're going to, again, we're, we're going to rely heavily on pre-child services to, to be able to monitor those kinds of statistics. Uh, are you Hispanic? Are you African American? Are you, what's your uh, economic background? Uh, do you have the ability to, uh, to pay for a bond? Those kinds of things. So obviously those factors are important to us. And we, we, already, we already do a racial profiling report every year. It's an annual report. SAPD does them, we do them, and that report will, picked up, will pick up those sort of metrics. It's already done on every traffic stop that an officer makes. They've got to indicate, was the race of the violator known prior to the stop? At what point did you become aware of it? Was there a search performed? Was it pursuant to consent? Was it, was it uh, a custodial arrest? All of that is already tracked, and so this should just feather right into the, what we're already doing. Is it the same information tracked for the arresting officer, you know, their race, and stuff like that? Yes, that'll, that'll be part of it. 
That, that's going to be an internal function. That, that's yeah, something that's, that the departments will take care of. That's not something that we will be privy to. But, but hopefully, again, we, we want to make sure that this is, fair, this is fair across the county, and I'm confident that these gentlemen will keep an eye on that. You had a question over here? Well, they, they become part of the system. At some point, a warrant is generated, and of course, then we've got no recourse other than to arrest that person, and then they're in the system. Uh, but I have to, I, I got, I've got to say that uh, probably in large part, if I had to guess why was it 60% year one, and why was it 50%, or why is it on track for 50% year two, I got to think that that's a, a learning curve. It's new to Bear County. It's something that, that uh, the officers are still having to learn the new process. The public certainly learning the new process. Factor in your nervous wreck. You've been contacted by the police and you came this close to going to jail. Um, you're probably a little shook up. And so I would think that, okay, where did they tell me I needed to go? Uh, in the, fir the first process, we were requiring them to come to the Bear County Jail. Probably a scary place for some people. I, I could un certainly understand why. So I, I think with, with the new process, it's going to factor in some of that. Uh, I'm certainly willing to do, if it's, if it's an information campaign that we need to do amongst the three of us, we've all got video production capabilities that maybe we can produce instructional videos for the public uh, to be able to click on and know the process again in case they didn't pick it up when it was explained to them on the night of the, the uh, non-custodial arrest. Whatever it is, we're willing to work with our stakeholders, fellow stakeholders, to get the information out so people know exactly what's expected of them. Bueno, si alguien no cumple con el proceso, uh, si no les no no cumplen con la chance que le hemos dado, uh, entonces hay hay manera de, de uh, arreglar eso, ¿no? Uh, sale una orden de arresto, a la persona lo arrestamos y luego uh, cae en la cárcel. Uh, nosotros vamos a hacer todo lo posible para para asegurar el público que este es el proceso nuevo y les vamos a dar a, a dar a saber. Uh, que, es, que es todo el proceso que ellos tienen que seguir para manejar el programa. Entonces, nosotros uh, vamos a asegurar todo, que, que todo, todo esté corriendo bien. Pero, pero más al punto, nosotros en la fiscalía tenemos el, el derecho y el poder para iniciar este caso nuevamente en la corte. Si una persona no se presente no se presenta y no cumple entonces nosotros entonces esa persona corre el riesgo que lo van a arrestar nuevamente y luego que él se tenga que presentar en la corte no no the reason was uh, was the the availability uh, of use of this building and issues like security. We want to make sure that we have a secure location. And so we had to coordinate with everybody that, that, that is here. Because uh, we, we, you know, we don't have the ability to just walk in and out uh, uh, without having other uh, people here. So we wanted to make sure that, we, that uh, this facility was available to us and that there was sufficient security for the people that were coming in and out. And so that, that's what, what caused the lag time. Well, that's just it. I thought I, at the beginning, I thought all I had to do was, was get, get these individuals to, to participate in, and uh, we'd have this facility open to us at, at, at our leisure. It didn't work that way. We have to work around uh, county hours. Uh, there's only certain uh, hours of the day when the security is here. There's only certain hours of the day when the light and the air conditioning is on. And so we've got we've to we've uh, you know, follow their rules. And so that was part of the negotiation that we had to enter into. Well, to be honest with you, uh, Travis County was, was one of those jurisdictions that took advantage of this law 12 years ago. Uh, almost immediately when it was passed, Travis County uh, operated their own version of site and release, and they've had some success uh, with it. And I have talked to the, uh, Margaret Mead, the elected DA in Travis County. I've talked to people in Harris County. Uh, and the, by and large, the, the 
The issues that they've had w is with the amount of no-shows. The issue that, that they have had is that their success rate is not as good as it could be because there's a lack of monitoring. And so we've learned from their mistakes. And so what I think we're doing differently is thanks to pretrial services, they're going to keep an eye on these individuals and say, look, you know, you came to report with us. Uh, we, we told you you had 60 days. We're at 30 days. Have you done what you're supposed to? All right, well, we're reminding you. Uh, and then maybe two weeks out, you've got two weeks. So, so we're trying to stay on top of them to remind them and maybe sometimes uh, they need a little push. And by the way, we're, we're going to try and work with them if, if they show up on the 61st day because they had health care issues or child care issues or maybe they couldn't get uh, off of their, their job, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work with them. But it's the individual who just blows it off and says, you know what, I'm not interested, I don't want to do this, then, then we exercise our, our prerogative and we file the case with the court. We've actually had what I call a speaking tour uh, that myself and my chief investigator uh, and other individuals in my office have visited with other uh, law enforcement agencies. We have 35 plus different law enforcement agencies in Bear County. And so some of them uh, are very eager to jump on board. Some of them are very eager to participate and they're doing what they can uh, to, to become partners. Because they're smaller agencies, they may not have the, uh, the resources available to the larger agencies, but they're doing what they can to, to create their own citation books, to, to uh, improve their computer systems so that they can uh, come on board, and hopefully they will soon. Okay. What I would say is uh, what we're doing is we're trying to be smart on crime. What we're doing is giving people the opportunity uh, that deserve an opportunity n not to languish in jail. People that don't have uh, a record of, of being violent offenders, people that are stopped for offenses like driving uh, without a license uh, or a small amount of marijuana, uh, if they commit those kinds of crimes and they're not a risk to the community, then I don't believe that we're being soft on them. We're giving them an opportunity to turn their lives around because who we're being tough on are the people that we need to be tough on, the violent offenders, the people that you and I are afraid of. So uh, again, this is a brand new uh, project and all I ask is for the community to give it time to work. Everyone here has spent a lot of time and effort to plan this thing and to hope that it succeeds and to hopefully we'll be able to come and report to you before the end of the year that we've had an enormous amount of success. Yes, 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 ma'am. You had a question? Oh, yeah. I didn't know you, uh, but um, um, you said that this being a pilot program and now, there's been some feedback that streamlined the process and people feeling more effective. Does it change your sense that they have to report to the entity or that you're in jail? What other uh, conditions? I think the, the, the difference is we've, we've created a more streamlined. Uh, uh, process where we are actually instructing the participants what they know uh, that they need to do. For example, they know exactly where they need to go here to the reentry center. They're going to know before they leave uh, whether or not they, they qualified and they were accepted into the program. And they're going to know exactly what they have to do, either perform the community service or to take those classes. And they know exactly the deadline. And so no one's going to be confused about what they have to do. And I think that's the difference in other ways that, they ha that this uh, has been attempted, is that there's not going to be any confusion. Hold on. Uh, what? Pues este programa, eh, estamos enfocando en los tipos de delitos donde en la comunidad no corre riesgo con amenazos, con, con casos así, que, que se trata de, de, de delitos de violencia. Estos son delitos menores y, y quizás la persona que cometió este dito, tipo de delito uh, necesita una oportunidad para cambiar su punto de vista, para que no le vayan a dar a esa persona cualquier récord que le va a afectar, verdad que le va a perjudicar en su carrera, en su vida, en oportunidades que ellos tengan. Así que es, 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 esas son oportunidades que nos son, le estamos dando a esas personas.
pero al mismo tiempo no estamos uh, arriesgando la comunidad de este condado. I would say that they're similar. They're, they're, we're trying to be as consistent as possible uh, with the way that we operate this program. Okay. If, What we're going to do is we're going to have to uh, have a staffing and we'll have to make the decision that if that person wasn't eligible for this program, then we have the right to file that case at large, which may result in an, an issuing an arrest warrant uh, and may result in them having to go to court to, to answer for the original charge for which they were stopped. Sure, and I'll do you one better. There may be, for whatever reason, that the officer doesn't believe that the person is a good candidate for sight and release. We still have the opportunity in the DA's office to review that case and decide whether or not to give them uh, uh, or recommend a PR bond or, or offer them conditional dismissal even before they get to court. But certainly when they get to court, if it gets that far, we have the ability to review a case and grant them uh, that type of opportunity that could have had at the beginning. And, and again, that's something that we're going to monitor. But that person would still have an arrest record. They may have an arrest record, sure. Uh, and again, remember, we're giving uh, the officers the discretion to make that decision. Uh, you know, we can't, we won't uh, interfere with their right to, to use that discretion. But we're, we've got to look at the bigger picture. Can we, can we uh, help them avoid a conviction if possible? So that's, that's uh, the main goal in this. How many times can a nonviolent offender, someone who is low-level offenses, be cited and released before the United States after the job? We have to start by the court, even if they never commit violence. Okay. That is a very good question. Remember, this is brand new to all of us here. So we're going to have to le learn as we go. But what I have told my staff is if someone uh, continues to be a player, a, con a participant, and he's figured out the system, then that's not your ideal candidate. This is for the person that we want to give them the opportunity to turn their lives around, to take responsibility for their conduct, uh, and to cure that, that problem. If they're not going to learn from their, from their behavior and they're a chronic offender, then I don't believe that that's the right candidate for this kind of program. And we're going to be looking at that individual. And, and I'll tell you that I, my personal opinion is that that's not what uh, that's not the kind of person this program is designed for. But if there's no criminal record, how will they know that this person has committed these uh, minor offenses or the time that there's no record of it? Well, because we're going to have an internal way of, of, of logging and keeping track of who uh, the participants are in this, in this program without the arrest record or the court uh, record. Yes, they're going to have their own internal okay. uh, monitoring method. Okay. All right. So if there isn't any other, yes. Before when you spoke, you said that people would be reporting on certain days, like maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays. Is right. that still the case, or what, can they report at any time to be reported? No, it's going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I think it's 10 to 5 on Tuesdays. 1 to 7 on Tuesdays. All right. So 1 to 7 on Tuesdays and 10 to 5 on Thursdays. So that was part of the making sure that, we, that the lights were on and the air conditioning was on. Okay, so that's uh, the times that we're looking at. Okay, thank you very much. Yes? That, that list you were talking about, it's a, uh, Which it's list? The internal list instead of, of people who are participating in, in site and release or, or have received citations. So you, you're saying that that list would be available to people within each department? Like they can see who has, so how, how does that work exactly? I guess I'm a little no, I didn't say that, that this was available to anybody. What I said was we're going to be monitoring the participants in the site and release program in the DA's office. So we will know someone who is, you know, uh, a frequent visitor, right, a frequent customer. Uh, and then we'll figure out whether or not that person really is benefiting from this program or just taking advantage of it. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am.
Well, no, that's not necessarily true because nothing prevents them from having their, their own internal way of monitoring people that they stop repeatedly, right? So if they decide to come up with a, with a system whereby they, they can track how many times they've stopped this person and that person has been accepted for sight and release and it's been two, three, four times, then they're going to know that that's the kind of person that's not really benefiting from that program because they're continuing to engage in that sort of behavior. Again, we don't know. This is brand new. We'll have to wait and see how it works. Give us time to learn from this process. Okay. Right, right off the bat, I can think of uh, our computer system. Typically, if we stop somebody like this, we're going to run them on, in the computer. We may have run their plate on a traffic stop or whatever that may be. Well, our system is set up such that uh, when we run a plate or a person, it'll kick back the last couple of officers that ran them. So that, that means you kick it up to the next level and you start to ask the questions. Hey, why did, why did one of my partners uh, you know, in the next neighborhood over stop you and, and run you about you know, six months ago? Oh, well, same thing. I got caught with a dime bag and uh, you know, they gave me a sight and release. Okay, so that would tell the officer, all right, this is clearly a person that didn't comply with it because I'm catching them again. So that's one of the fail safes that, that we have with regard to this. Probably not a perfect system coming right out of the gate. I'm sure we're going to run across um, things that need to be tweaked, but that's what this is all about. With him being legal now in Texas and looking identical to marijuana and smelling exactly like marijuana, uh, and you can just go into a smoke shop and now buy pre rolled joints, they call it, and or the flowers that just look like marijuana. How is that going to complicate things when someone tells you that this is just CBD? Well, the, the problem is that the officers are are going to have to make their decisions whether or not someone is eligible for sites and release based on the, the initial contact they have with that individual and the amount of marijuana. They don't have any way of testing the amount of THC uh, in marijuana. That's not what they have to do. That's not their responsibility. Uh, that's our responsibility. So they're going to make the decision based on the amount of marijuana and based on the initial contact, not the amount of THC. Well, again, if, if it was something that was completely legal or something that we decided not to take, they're still, if, if they participate in, um, in the site and release, no harm, no foul, right? Because they haven't been arrested. Remember, we at the DA's office is still going to review that case to, discern, to determine whether it's a righteous case for us to accept. If, in, for whatever reason, that individual is arrested, we still have a prosecutor at the magistrate's office that's going to review that case to determine whether or not to take, uh, to accept that case. Uh, and so there's, there's, there are different fail safes to ensure that someone isn't either arrested or, or maintained in custody for a, a conduct that's not illegal. Well, that's a law enforcement question. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. And, and, and we could, we could in, my, in my opinion, we could what if this all day long. Um, it's going to come down to the officer's training and experience. If they can articulate that that drug is what they believe that it is, um, and through their training and experience, then that, that, that's all we have to rely upon. Until some sort of a, a presumptive test comes out to be able to test for that, that's what we've got to rely on. So, you know, we'll have to up our game when, the, when something, another new technology comes along. Uh, but, you know, as I mentioned, we could sit here and come up with scenarios all day long for why this would work or why it wouldn't work. We're just going to have to wait and see with what we've got in front of us at the time. Okay. If there aren't any other questions, then thank you very much for coming down. Uh, Y'all have a wonderful weekend. See you, man. Take care. Joe, thanks. Thank you. Do, you, do you have two minutes? Absolutely. We need to visit with you about okay. something. Okay.